Pledge of Allegiance by Ken McFarland. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, May 21st commission meeting. Uh, reminder to silence your cell phones, please. Meeting documents are over there on that little black book next to... Uh, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and we have listening devices, and uh, Robert's gone, so you can't get those either, I guess. <laughs> oh, he's right. Oh, there he is in the back. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the agenda. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes 4-0. Item two is to approve the county commission minutes of May 14th, 2013. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. Uh, any corrections? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item three, our bills to be paid in the amount of $877,995.57. Pay the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, comments, Commissioner Barth? Uh, the bills this week include uh, 241000 to the libraries on the quarterly payment, and there's another payment uh, for correct care for $100,000. I would also just say that we're still getting those $420 uh, bills for uh, energy costs that our Human Services Department has to pay. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, those in favor of approving the bills, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 4, reports. The Register of Deeds official statement of revenue collected during April 2013 has been received and placed on file in the auditor's office. Item 5 is personnel. A is to approve the routine action. Move routine action. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve routine action. Any questions? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Unanimously passes. Item six is application for abatement. Pam Nelson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have Pam. five abatements set for the assessment freeze. We have ID number 28688 for $514.43. We have ID number 37185 for $933.33. We have ID number 4685 46583 for Four hundred seventy-eight sixty-three. We have ID number five three eight eight seven for seven hundred forty-six eighteen, and ID number five nine three six two for six hundred twenty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. Thank you, Pam. Um, I just want to make one comment. I think in the future, if I'm correct, we're no longer going to use names on these. We're just going to use IDs. Is that correct? That would be correct. Thank you. I think that's a good idea. Uh, do we have a motion and a second to approve? Motion to approve the abatements. Second. Any comments or questions? Just would have Commissioner question. Barth. Pam, uh, do both uh, residents at a place have to be uh, old enough, so to speak, or no. just one? Just one. Yeah, but their income obviously is something that yeah, you check but out. their incomes go together. Yeah, thank you. And these people are all well into their 80s. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the abatements. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 7 is notices and requests. Item A is a notice from the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources of proposal to renew its general air quality permit for construction and or continuous activities at state facilities in the Rapid City Air Quality Control Zone. Items B, C, D, and E are to authorize the county auditor to publish notice to bidders for Minnehaha County Highway projects. Tom Wilsey. Tom Wilsey, County Highway. Um, B is our, we're asking you to authorize for bid letting um, MC140 MS13, which is a microsurfacing project that we're going to do on um, County Road 140. 
from Ellis Road going east about one and a quarter miles. Um, this is a new material that we've never used before. We've put the plans together in-house and the city has been using it for the last five years and they like it and we're giving it a try. Any questions of Tom? Uh, probably oh, need to vote have, on these independent individually. I, think. I have one other correction. We had a uh, the second to last paragraph of your um, notice here that they said uh, finished prior to June twenty second. It should be July twenty second. Okay. Correction on that. Okay. We Thanks. are hoping to let the Ellis job too. So. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom? If not, I'm looking for a motion to publish. Are we so doing them one or all? We're going to do each one individually. Okay. I'll motion to approve the microsurfacing of County Highway 140. Second. We have a motion and a second to publish the notice. Any other questions? If not, those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Next one is for the annual materials letting. This letting, we went through all the items and went reviewed them with the state bids and with the city bids. Um, we found a lot of them where the city or the state does not use the same material as us or a good except There are several of them also where the city contracts were ending midsummer and we can't have an interruption in our supply on some of them. Um, we are going to go in conjunction with the city on our asphalt and road salt bid that will be coming to you next week. Any questions on any of these? Any questions on either Commissioner Kelly? Um, I'm thinking particularly on item one and two, but uh, why why is our is there a reason because we're rural and they're urban that, that our specs are different than their the, Well, number one, the the liquid asphalt. We use an MC material which is an uh, cut back with diesel. It stores easier. We they use a, an emulsion for their chip seal. Or not chip for their tack. And we don't have a facility to keep it agitated. If we store it for a long time period of time it'll separate and we can't use it. Um, concrete we want we're our concrete we would like to have structural concrete for a lot of the repairs that we're going to be doing on our bridges um, they do not they use an M uh, what are they can't remember exactly what it is they use more of a maintenance concrete for theirs because they don't do many bridges they do mostly roads and they're doing different type of work we don't have any concrete roads in county I don't think do we? we have one okay and that's it um, and then the control density fill, that is a material that we can use when we're putting in a pipe that we can dump it around this bottom of the pipe. It fills underneath so we don't get undermining of our pipes. And I could not find a bid on the city bid for that. Other questions for Tom? Move to publish notice on the materials. Second. We have a motion and a second to go ahead and publish the notice. One other question: There's a significant savings on the uh, is it the asphalt and the road salt? You think, or I mean, you anticipate the asphalt significant? I I couldn't give you an exact dollar. I've heard numbers up to a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, okay. possible. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Six to seven dollars per ton, twenty-five thousand ton. You do the math there. I, I can't do it in my head. I need a calculator to do that. Hundred fifty. Okay. Other questions for Tom and his sidekick DJ? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the numbers in his head. I don't. It's okay. Well, obviously, the purchasing policy that we established. Uh, last year has worked because this by itself is going to save us some significant dollar amounts so we appreciate your uh, cooperation in making that happen thank you we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the publish of the bids uh, or bid published the notice to the bidders those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed 
Motion unanimously passes. The next one is for Project Seal 2013. It's a chip seal of 30 miles of 30.8 miles of county roads. Um, we do this every year. We for, have for the last 12 years at least that I can swear to. Um, it's on our annual schedule and in our, we're going to be doing it even more in the future. Uh, questions again on, for Tom? Make a motion to authorize publication of this bid. Thank you. Second. A motion and a second to make the uh, notice of bidders published on the project seal 2013. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion unanimously passes. And the last one is MC 50 150202-2. This is the replacement of the superstructure on the Ellis Bridge. We let the beams, I want to say two to three weeks ago. Um, this is going to replace all the abutments and the, super, the beams and the deck on this structure. This will get rid of the posting on the bridge and we'll be able to open it up for full loads. The estimated cost of this project is going to be about $800,000. Make a motion to authorize publication of this notice to bidders. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, authorize a publication to the bidders for the county highway project. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you, Tom. There are no planning and zoning notices today. The next items are petitions for compromise of lien. Ken McFarland. Uh, before you start, Ken, I just want to again uh, let people know that uh, in reference to these compromises of lien, people are not being asked to identify themselves. They do not need to come to the microphone to be identified or be on camera, so to speak. They can stay where they're at and make any conversation after they're presented. In their case, you do not have to uh, be publicly acknowledged. So, thank you. Commissioners, the first lien that we have is on DPNO 52212, and the current balance of this lien is in the amount of $9,179.20. Uh, the applicant and his wife are in the process of purchasing a home here in Sioux Falls, and in fact, the closing is scheduled for tomorrow, I believe. We've provided you with the documents to show the uh, anticipated selling price of the house and any cost to the applicants as part of the closing. Uh, the applicant is not going to be listed on the mortgage application on the um, on the house or the title. However, the title company has in fact attached the lien as part of this closing because of the homestead interest that he would have in the property due to the marriage, and that uh, this applicant has paid on this lien approximately $1,054 since the inception of the lien. Um, they have indicated that, uh, you know, due to the late notice of this lien by the title company this close to the closing, and that their funds to, uh, to pay on this lien are somewhat limited. Uh, they have a combined annual income of $32,000. We've listed their assets and liabilities. And, that, and as we've indicated, again, they re did receive a sizable tax refund, but as we've been able to determine, those been used for other purposes, and the couple still owes about $2,250 at the time of the closing. Uh, they've indicated that um, by purchasing this particular home, they can improve their financial condition because they can make uh, cheaper mortgage payments on this property uh, rather than the rent that they are currently paying. The original lien application asked that the lien be discharged in full with no payment so that they could pr proceed with the purchase Ooh. of the house. Uh, he has indicated this morning that um, he, he is able and willing to make a payment of $800 toward the lien. So if you add that to the total that he's paid to date, <coughs> that would be approximately $1,854 that he has paid on the lien account since its inception. Most of it was for court appointed and public defender services and some minor services at human services. So, and the applicant is here.
if you have any questions or he would like to make any comment. Any questions for Ken first? Does anyone have any questions for Ken? Again, the applicant can make any comments if they would like. They can stand where they're at, uh, and we're obviously able to hear. If you would like to make comments, we'd be happy to hear those. If not, we'll move ahead with the process. Is the applicant interested in making any comments? Okay. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions from the uh, commission? I have a question. Commissioner Barth. Um, Ken, uh, the, the, the cost in 2010 of 74.81 is pretty significant for a public defender. Uh, that's a pretty large one. I mean, we often have much smaller ones. Can you tell me what that was about? Kirsten? You, you want to know the subject matter of that charge? Yeah. Okay. Hold on just a moment. I believe that was a trial, uh, a full trial. Um, would you like the charges or just the outcome? I guess the, the charges would be of interest to me because if it's uh, of a violent nature, I would be worried. And, well, and the outcome would, as well. Yeah, I would yeah. think the outcome, outcome would be sure. extremely the important. Yeah. <clears throat> the outcome would be great. Okay. Um, there were two counts. Um, one uh, rape fourth degree, one sexual contact with a child. One of them came back not guilty after, on a jury trial verdict, and one came back a hung jury. Thank you. So, yep. Question, Commissioner Hyberger. Um, what's the cost of the mortgage going forward? I believe I saw the purchase price on the house is approximately sixty-three thousand dollars, and that is is the purchase price. Or did you have? I was wondering the the monthly mortgage charge. I think was was around three hundred dollars, which would be way less than half of what you would pay for rent. And that Am I was because it was it's kind of blurry on my. And that was the primary reason for the um, um, to go to this is because their monthly payment on the mortgage was going to be cheaper than what they uh, could uh, uh, pay rent for. Mm -hmm. And then and I'm not seeing it right now, Commissioner. Uh, but yeah, when I when I reviewed it, um, it struck me as that it would be cheaper than their monthly rent. Uh, monthly monthly um, payment would be three hundred and forty six dollars yes. ninety four cents, which is less than half of what it would cost probably to get a one bedroom apartment in the city of Sioux Falls. Any other questions or comments, Commissioner Kelly? Well, once again, we're looking at public defender costs primarily. The uh, the last. He was making payments on previous public defender costs. They were small, but he, uh, as of 2007, he, there, the, uh, there was nothing owed. Then the, the big trial of about $7,500 cost to the public defender's office. Uh, I don't see any payments made since then, but there may have been. Um, Since the big one, there were in fact some smaller payments, but they were. Oh, very I see. Small. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, were very yeah, small. They were very small. Yeah. So it, it's not as though the, the the they were not aware of the fact that they owed the money. Um, it's I don't know why we get these things brought to us the day before closing. Uh, I, I know the title companies and everybody else, but it, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to us to make these decisions. But just. On, we got this information on Thursday and, or Friday, so. Um, and in fairness to the title companies, I will tell you, and a lot of it is is their bond. I understand that, but anybody. still, still, and they are. I mean, this is an attorney cost, and and people can't be thinking that a public defender is a free attorney if you don't have any money. And, and there's no, I mean, eight hundred dollars is insignificant for the amount owed, and I will not support. I will not support this. Commissioner Barth. Mr. Chair, I will make a motion to accept the uh, applicant's offer. And if I get a second, I would comment further. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm in a second. We have a comment. Well, we have a second. So, Commissioner Barth. Well, I, I really appreciate the fact that the applicant has made payments in the past. I also know uh, from doing equalization hearings what, uh, what kind of house this is. And I'm appreciative that the applicant is trying to find a house for his family to live in, and purchasing a house will be, be 
making property tax payments. And so I think uh, there are a number of good things uh, that may come out of this, and that's the reason for my motion. Commissioner Heiberger? The reason for my second is uh, pretty much along the same line as far as um, putting your kids in a stable home, putting them in a stable school district, um, getting them out of apartment life to um, hopefully the human services won't be helping to pay rent and other um, utilities and stuff in the future and hopefully in, you hope in the long run by putting somebody in a stable home that they're getting out of our system and not continuing to put them back in our system and that's the reason why I'm supporting it. Any other questions or comments? If not, I have a question, if I might. Can, can this lien be transferred to the individual rather than putting it on the real estate? Uh, that is that is a potential option, and that, um, but quite frankly, it will be up to the title company and the mortgage company if, if they if they would accept that. But yes, it's you can in fact, for the purposes of a transaction, say uh, you are going to remove this lien from the real estate only, and what it does is keeps the lien intact but it bars you from any, I, I believe, any other future attempt to, to, from the proceeds of that property since you have released it from the property. So so the answer is yes. You can, yes. How come I can never get just a simple answer? Because <laughs> as in all things, liens are part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken. And Ken? Commissioner Heiberger. I have a follow-up question to Gerald's question. So if we did that, what if the mortgage company denies? Then you it probably, then the closing probably will not happen tomorrow, and then you'll be dealing with a, you know, depending on what their decision is, and uh, you'll be dealing with this next week on a revised action. How often does that happen where a real estate would de uh, title company deny that? Do you, do you have any idea? Uh, no. Well, they, can, they can just, they won't close tomorrow. That doesn't mean the deal's dead. They just won't be able to close tomorrow. But that, Unless, again, the that happens in real estate, you know, that yeah. sometimes a closing gets delayed 30 or two weeks or a month. And the title company's got to learn they can't bring this to us at the last second. Other questions or comments? Uh, we have a motion on the table with no amendments. And May I, I point out one other thing? Absolutely. If there is not an affirmative vote by three of you here and there's no decision, then this is an action that's going to automatically be brought forward next week when I have another commissioner here. Well, potentially. <laughs> yeah, we have a problem with schedule again. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll call for a roll call vote if, in fact, there aren't any other questions or motions. Uh, go ahead, Cindy. Commissioner Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Yes. Kelly? No. Benigo? Yes. Motion passes three to one. Your uh, lien has been uh, t taken care of with that payment. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck with your family issues. Uh, the second uh, lien on the uh, agenda. I've been doing this for a lot of years, and I will tell you this is the first circumstance I've had on this one. And that's so. Um, we have a we have a lien DPNO two three five six three. That's in the the name of the applicant and an ex-wife, uh, and the lien is for $610.84. Um, the applicant uh, was in fact incarcerated in the pen, and during the period of this incarceration, services were accessed by the ex-wife at our Human Services Department, where she had listed the applicant's name as her spouse during the application process, and that's how the lien got on the uh, on the name of the applicant and the ex-wife. The applicant is claiming that um, they weren't married and that Anne has no idea why his name, she had claimed that they were on the, uh, why his name was listed as the spouse. 
and we've checked with the Register of Deeds and we can't find a record of the name of the applicant and this ex-wife as far as a marriage license being issued at least in the state of South Dakota. And um, the reason that this lien is coming up is the applicant is currently married and he is in the process of being uh, separated or divorced and his the property in question here belongs to his current wife, soon to be ex-wife, and she's refinancing and um, she wants to close on this refinancing but this lien, because again, of a homestead interest of the applicant during the time, even though it's not, you know, his name's not on the deed, the title company is putting that homestead interest against the property. So he's looking to get this lien discharged uh, his original request is to discharge it in full with no payment so that the lien can disappear against the property and his soon-to-be ex-wife can go. And again, his claim is his name should never have been on this anyway because he wasn't married and we can't verify that there was. Now, I know Carol was here. Did you have something to say in that regard? But we cannot verify that there was an actual marriage that took place. And I'm not sure if the applicant is here. So I don't think so. Thank you, Ken. Questions for Ken? Commissioner Peckis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at his... I'm sorry. That's where he normally sits. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Kelly. I thought those were for the audience. You need to go sit over, over the where chair. you <laughs> um, are, are you telling us that he's getting divorced from a wife he isn't married to? I'm tell No. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> no, I am not. The lady on the lien, the applicant and the woman listed on the lien, and that um, uh, he's claiming they were never married in the first place. That was 1988. It was that woman who, and we have verified that she was the one who accessed services at Human Services Department, but on her application, she stated she was in fact married to this individual, and that but weak, and he's claiming no, I wasn't. And I don't know why he used, she used my name. And we, again, cannot find any record that a marriage took place between him and a woman of that name. And that he is since married. I see. Okay. And his present wife has title to the property that she's refinancing. During this refinancing, they're now divorcing. And that, and again, because of his homestead interest in the property, this lien is slopping over there, and he wants that cleared up for that transaction. Now, you could take an action to release this lien against the real estate only, if you're confident that there's nothing there, and take an action to remove his name from the lien. Or if you want to just make sure that this is, you know, you want to resolve it at some other point in time, you could simply take the action to remove it against the real estate only with no payment. and. The lien stays in his name and her name until there's time to sort it out, but at least you can take care of the transaction in a timely manner if you're confident that it shouldn't spill over to that property. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Barth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had that look on my face too when I first heard this one. If, if a person's uh, Reported spouse is in prison. Uh, does that uh, open it up for larger ass assistance from uh, the county? I I don't I can't answer. I don't think it would, but I don't I don't know for sure. If you were previously married, then your second marriage wouldn't be legal, which would make this six hundred ten dollars maybe cheaper than getting a real divorce. <laughs> I, 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 if I may, uh, I'm going to make a motion to uh, approve uh, dismissing this lien. I think, uh, you know, the stuff is back from 1989 and uh, 88, and there seems to be enough confusion about its origin, origin that uh, um, I, I'm willing to excuse it. I'll second that. He was in the pen in 1980, and these expenses are from 1988. And I think in the application it says she only ever visited him once or twice. I guess I doubt the validity of her stating that they were married. 
other questions or comments? We have a motion and a second to release the lien. Is that correct? I think we'll need a roll call vote again. <laughs> Commissioner Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Yes. Kelly? No. Benega? Yes. I would just like to make a comment as I agree with Commissioner Heiberger that if he was in the pen from 1980 to 1994 for 14 years, I don't know how this lien could have got attached to that particular piece of property when uh, he says that he was not married and we can't prove he is. We can't find anything. And for $600, we've uh, already spent a ton of county time trying to figure this thing out. So I think it's time to move on. Must be a full moon or something. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is opportunity for public comment. If there are any items on the, that aren't on the agenda that anyone would like to speak to us about, we would be happy to hear that. Otherwise, we will go to the agenda items. I don't see anybody coming forward, so we'll go to uh, regular, business. regular business. Item number 10 is a public hearing to consider an application for a special event on sale wine retailers and special event off sale package wine dealers license for the Siouxland Renaissance Association. The two licenses will allow the organization to sell wine to be consumed on site as well as selling packaged South Dakota farm wine by the bottle. The applications have been reviewed by the Sheriff's Department, State's Attorney's Office, Planning and Zoning, and there were no objections or concerns reported. The action that we are requesting today is to approve the special event on sale wine retailers and off sale package wine dealers license for the Siouxland Renaissance Association. And Lady Catherine is here representing the Siouxland Renaissance Association to address the commission. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I am Lady Catherine Davane, Countess of Bridgewater part of the court for the Sula and Renaissance Association. Um, and in my mundane life, I'm Valerie Leitz, and I am the treasurer for the Sula and Renaissance Association. Um, and the uh, wine has made us a very good profit over the years, and I would love to be able to sell it again. Um, our uh, vendor that we used last year was Crooks Winery, and he has since decided that selling real estate was more of a profitable event for him and has moved on to other ventures. And we have now um, brought into our fold Tucker's Walk Vineyard over by Gerritsen, between Corson and Gerritsen. And he will be providing the wine for us this year. So we're staying in Minnehaha County even with our vendors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions for Lady Catherine? Make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Is there a second? No second. And there is a second to approve the wine and retail license, off sale package license. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Good luck. May I say one more thing? Absolutely. Um, my, um, I'd like to embarrass one of the county employees if I could today <laughs> of all days. We try to do that every week. <laughs> um, my husband. Richard Leitz, who works in the county auditor's office. Oh. Um, I need to uh, announce to the board that today is our wondrous 25th wedding anniversary. Oh. Oh. So the man has put up with me and all my silliness for 25 years. <laughs> so go easy on him, especially Cindy, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. You. Happy anniversary. Richard, how come you're all red? <laughs> Are you Sir Richard? Thank you. Item number 11 is a public hearing to consider rezoning number 13-03, rezoning property from the A1 Agricultural District to the C Commercial District, property described as Track 2 of Rose Edition in the Northeast Quarter, and a portion of Track 1, Dockendorf Additions in the Northeast Quarter, all in Section 26, Township 101 North, Range 48 West. Pat Herman. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat Herman for the County Planning Office. Um, this is a request from Paul Rowe to rezone some property in Rowena. It's shown outlined in white on the map. Um, the colors of red are commercial and the purple is industrial, so you can see that there is quite a bit of 
property already zoned for a commercial or industrial use in Rowena is traditionally been an area where we have uh, supported the use or commercial use in this area. Right south of the subject property there are two existing houses. Um, we did not hear from either one of those people. Um, they were noticed and sign was posted so um, and nobody came to the Planning Commission meeting to speak against this item. Uh, those two properties are shown to be commercial on the future land use plan as well. The uh, property owner hopes to do um, many storage units on the site and that would require a conditional use permit in the future um, and also would have to meet the setback requirements of the corridor requirements in this area. The Planning Commission had this on their consent agenda so it comes to you with a unanimous recommendation of approval and uh, your action today would be to uphold or reverse the conditional or the rezoning of number 13-03 from A1 Agricultural to the C Commercial District and the property owner is here today if you have any questions. Thank you, Pat. Any questions for Pat? Commissioner Kelly. You, I think, stated earlier that Douglas Street is, in fact, a street? Yes, Douglas Street is an open street, yep. Okay. It's maintained by the township. Any other questions for Pat? Commissioner Barth? Pat, I'm in support of this, but uh, at what point are we going to uh, do more about the sanitary sewer and stuff in that area? Is there a concern with that at all? I don't think it would be possible here, given the rock, rock underlay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, but for storage units, you really aren't going to need anything, no. and they live right adjacent to the site. So, right. yeah. Thank you. Other questions? If not, it's a public hearing. It's a public hearing. It is a public hearing, isn't it? So we will see this again. Uh, no, that, that, is is today. Today. that is today. That is today. Looking at the wrong date. Sorry. Yep, we need to hear from any proponents or opponents. Would you like to speak? Do you not need to? Again, is there any opponents? It appears there isn't any. I would move to approve. Second. Thank you, Dick. We have a motion and a second to approve. The rezoning. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item number 12 is consider a motion to authorize the use of $937 in ASN 9556 to supply and maintain an employee exercise workout area on the second floor of the Siouxland Health and Human Services Building. Carol Muller. Good morning. The city has um, done some coordination and wants to place an exercise workout area on the second floor. There's a, a break room area that's an uh, area for us to congregate back there. And they have been gracious enough to say that the county could work with them on using that equipment also. So one of the things we need to do is we need to buy some flooring for that area, you know, the rubber mat type stuff, and then looking at the ongoing expenses. So what we are asking is that the funds, there are two sets of vending machines in that building. One is downstairs where the public has access to. The other set is upstairs where only employees have access to in that same room as a matter of fact and so all there is a certain percentage that comes from those accounts from those vending machines since we moved into the building that has been placed into account and we don't know exactly what the split is between the two but what we're requesting is saying could um, a certain percentage of that 33 percent be made available for supplies and related expenses and then moving ahead if those areas could be split and the employee area vending machines going forward, the profits from that would be available for those ongoing expenses. Thank you, Carol. Any questions for Carol? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Kelly? Carol, will the city be responsible for cleaning and maintaining that room then? Um, you know, they put a process together as to what they've done on that. What's that mean? And I'm not sure exactly where that committee has come up with on that, but yes, well, there'll be some responsibilities. So we won't have costs it's, involved? It's been, no. What we're looking for is that this would be a self taking care of process. Okay. It's patterned on how the, I believe, the water reclamation plant or one of those areas has already done this and it's patterned after that, which has worked out well. Other questions or comments? We're looking for a uh, motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve the use of the fund to maintain the 
exercise workout area. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 13. 13. Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Does anyone have any liaison reports to give? Well, yeah, I suppose we had our first meeting of the uh, Criminal Justice Advisory Committee meeting yesterday, and uh, that will be off and running. We hope to bring probably some sort of initial report, at least before budget hearings start, but, uh, uh, and hoping maybe by the end of summer to have this thing wrapped up to address the CCC and the population situations. And uh, Craig Anderson left us quite a few jobs to do <laughs> between now and two weeks from now, so so it uh, for Gerald and I, it's going to be quite busy. Any other liaison reports? Thank you, Dick. If not, uh, any new business? Commissioner Barth. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, you know, I, this is new and it's old, but you may have seen where there's a suggestion that lowering the blood alcohol content uh, for a criminal offense from 0.08 to 0.05 uh, might be considered by a benefit by some. Uh, the county, though, is the one that has to bear the burden when that party uh, is over. We are the ones that have to in incarcerate, prosecute, defend, detoxify, etc. cetera, these, these additional people. Where are we going to get the new prosecutors? Where are we going to get the new defense attorneys? Where are we going to house the new judges? Uh, these are the issues that we are left as we continue to subsidize the consumption of alcohol with our limited property taxes. Uh, I don't know if that's old business or new business, but uh, we certainly have to keep this in mind. And, and those that think that they're doing a good thing by, you know, criminalizing more and more activity, you know, what if you raise the drinking age to 30? Uh, wouldn't that be great? Uh, I clearly see that uh, this is probably going to happen, but we as citizens, must make that industry pay their fair share towards the cost of uh, excessive consumption of booze. Thank you, Jeff. Any other comments? Any other new business? If not, we'll go to uh, old business. Anyone have any old business? We're an easy group this morning. Mm -hmm. I would uh, move adjournment into executive session for personnel. Thank second. You. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second to go into exec session for personnel. Um, after we come out of exec, exec session, we will be back here at? We're scheduled at 1030 to begin the budget overview session. 1030? Yes, sir. Thank you, Ken. We'll be back here uh, at 1030 yeah. to uh, address the budget issues. Those in favor of the executive session signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously passes.